Hello there, friends. Before we jump into it, uh, if you like what we do here on cpdh.guide, the YouTube, uh, and you want to support us in a free way, because, you know, that's what friends do, hit that like, hit that subscribe, even share the damn thing. All right, on to the show. On today's quarterly report, Puzzle discusses, discusses his affinity, I can't even say it right, for aggro. Roll it! <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, okay, folks, here we are, here we are. So, uh, quarter one, 2024, uh, tournament report, uh, open play versus organized play, uh, brought to you by none other than our man, Bodarn. Um, so, Dallas and I were talking a little bit before uh, we hit the go button, Um in previous reports, uh, we would go through line by line, making sure we we milk that for every single drop of goodness and honey that's located on the page. As per always, uh, the link to this report will be in the description below. And that's key because we're not going to cover everything line by line like we normally do, because... Quite frankly, some of you aren't children anymore, and you can do your own homework and that kind of stuff. And for those people who are new to the format, who are new to the meta, they can uh, read uninterrupted without listening to us bumbling idiots, you know, stumble line by line by line by line. Uh, and they can correlate uh, what they're reading with the sweet goodness that is dripping from thine lips regarding their impression of the format um anyway if you don't know this gentleman across from me uh by now co-pilot of the common theory webcast broadcast podcast, podcast. whatever you want to call it and then you he know, and, the thing. and then he does his own stuff occasionally on his own channel because he's just this rogue-minded individual yeah, Mr. Puzzlebox DC, Dallas. How you doing, brother? Not too shabby. Just uh, getting through school. How have you been doing? Working my ass off. <laughs> um, I uh, gained employment uh, in December um, uh, by virtue of my display of talent. Uh, I was immediately selected for the onboarding team of this company that I was, I just started working for while I was in onboarding because I showed a prowess in getting people from point A to point B, whatever here. So here we are a few months later, I've probably onboarded, uh, anybody who's, uh, interacted in this world. I've probably assisted with the onboarding of 600 people in the past four months. Where so, could you have possibly built up that skill? <laughs> uh, well, it's funny because they're like, uh, do you know anything about like uh, like Teams or chat, Google Chats or anything like that? And I go, um, Discord? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, anyway, life has been extremely busy. If I haven't uh, uh, called you in a, while, in a while, mother, you know, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, between work... PDH and the wife, nothing else exists. So, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to switch these, uh, these screens over here. What the, the beautiful folks are seeing now, Dallas, my man, is my man, Dallas, Dallas, my man. <laughs> Sorry, fifth element just bang right in my head. Um, is they're seeing the, uh, the black, the white on black, the typical uh, for the uh, Boat Arns report. Um, I think we're just going to. If he, unless you got something else, I think we... No, I'm good to just hop right in here. Put the old spurs. Okay, so now, once again, the link to this will be in the description. You click on it, download it, read it. You know, uh, it probably make for some nice bedtime reading for you and your uh, your your significant other. Uh, you either put you in the mood or put you out cold. One of the two. Uh, highly recommend. So we're going to skip down to this performance. Performance. Say what? So instead of winning this... Um, Bodarn went ahead and like move that, change the words to performance, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Uh, it'll still be winningness, uh, on the website because, um, 
in in the documents in the reports we talk about performance uh relative to uh the stats and all that you know more as a as a whole as a bigger picture uh but in that little graph uh on the website it's only displaying like the winningness like you know ratio so that'll stay the same but moving forward in these reports we'll talk about uh uh performance instead of winningness uh, once again, uh, for these definitions or for these words, he provides, uh, I think, more than adequate definitions for uh, even small children to understand what is it, what it is that we're talking about with these terms. I know I, that was that was too much bad. Even <laughs> even small children. <laughs> uh, it's been a day. It's been a day. So another thing that he's done uh, is he has put in uh, the TLDR at the beginning instead of at the end so that's where we're at right now uh my man dallas is there anything from this uh that is surprising like maybe that maybe that first commander there yeah I, um, I, it's so so shocking to see gretchen <laughs> up here i know um yeah um a lot of the top meta decks that you're seeing a lot of the time are the same that we've been seeing for the last few quarters here, um, notably Malcolm Rogrock is up here this time, as long as Loyal Subordinate, which are a couple new ones to be shifted into the meta tier, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and then there's some interesting decks that are uh, on the up and up, like, for instance, Sir Conrad has been seeing a lot of play recently. So, mm -hmm. What I find interesting, so in previous reports we had talked about malcolm red list and specifically those would be like your malcolm kettis like malcolm kettis was the go-to malcolm red deck but if you notice there's a deviation away from that that middle of the road malcolm to the either the uber fast malcolm or the control breaches malcolm which i find somewhat interesting especially when you start looking at these uh, these other be on the lookout uh, for decks. Uh, when you look at those comparatively, I I think maybe I'm just reading into the tea leaves a little bit. Uh, but like Conrad <clears throat> specifically was built to prey on Malcolm Kettis, you know. So like the fact that it's not there, you know, the other co-conspirators with the uh, the building of that list, uh, Aaron and Gator. Uh, I know at least one of them is. Uh, Malcolm Kettis player, so coincidence that you're seeing what you're seeing? <laughs> I who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, part of it is the fact that we only have so many players in uh, our small format, so some of these decks are represented by one or two pilots, and we'll just mm. be here every time uh, because people don't switch. Well, what's interesting about that, I think, is that all right, when's the last time you checked on the uh, the numbers for Gretchen? Um, I just check them intermittently, but yeah, like Gretchen specifically, I haven't been playing much mm. Gretchen recently. Um, but well, I, think I think Gretchen numbers are still relatively up. I think so. I think Gretchen has at least a uh, hundred and fifty logged games. Yeah, by now, definitely. I think it's approaching two hundred. So, I... so now what you can say in the analytics is that okay. At the time that those Gretchen games were logged, was it contemporary with some of the other decks being played, like Conrad and what have you? I mean, there's some argument to be made there that there might not be much overlap, and that one one monolith of uh, you know experience for one deck might not be able to explain you know this other. I mean, sure, you can get into the weeds and all of that, but I think the with some of these lists, especially with these uh, these uh, old old standards, these meta standards, I'm trying to remember what you and Chris call them, uh, like not not Gretchen, but like the uh, little subordinates and uh, the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers. <laughs> there you go. Trying to see um, exactly through iteration, you know, comparison of iteration instead of like contemporary play if we had a thousand players playing all the decks then it'd be real easy to map all that out so we're doing some some uh, speculation as it were and comparing and overlapping these uh these performance arcs that may not be contemporaneous but i'm talking again so 
anything else in the TLDR that you uh, that you're seeing? Um, I do want to point out uh, control is more popular statement. Uh, this is something that I talked about uh, whenever Chris and I were talking about our tournament experience, and I mentioned I think at I think every single pod I played in had at least me on a control deck and one other person on a control deck. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it was. And you were playing. What were you playing? I was playing Malcolm Breaches. Um, and honestly, I contextual kind of uh, <laughs> very miserable uh, pods to play combo in. It was like impossible to go for a combo ever during those games, and I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty interesting from just like a super competitive standpoint. Mm -hmm. That that's what showed up. Yeah. So from that, regarding the archetypes section there. I find it interesting uh, how Bodarn, because I know he's real intentional with his words. So control is more popular, aggro is less popular, combo is doing worse, mid range is doing better. So there's this weird, like, so is control being more popular contributing to aggro being less popular? In fairness, like where where Aaron is concerned, Aaron is the one who plays uh, gut most of the time. And he switched over to uh, Conrad. So there's a one for one trade there from an aggro player to a control player. But from the other perspective of like, you know, is is combo doing worse because con uh, control is more popular, you know, and is that why mid rate? Some yeah. some loose speculation there, uh, but just some things to think about. Uh, and uh, as I told Dallas at the uh, uh uh, at the onset here, uh, the thumbnail says uh, uh, can, aggro and combo are dead. <laughs> uh, I know I'm a jerk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of the popularity thing is like, once again, small format, a player switching from one archetype to another does mm -hmm. impact the uh, statistics somewhat. So like looking at one becoming more popular and one less popular, I think is a lot less interesting than looking at one becoming more popular and one becoming worse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, Bodarn's words are certainly punctual. So this this last thing that I'll say before we uh, move on to the uh, uh, the open play and uh, organized play, uh, I think I've only said this one time, and it was in a uh, like one of those morning breakfast chats, which I haven't been in for a while because life's been busy. Um, I'm getting to the point. Like for example, I just bought. bought 34 Seb McKinnon swamps for my uh, Conrad deck. Now, if you know anything about the Seb McKinnon secret layer swamps, they're $5 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's the price tag. So, needless to say, uh, Conrad's not going, my version of Conrad is not going anywhere. And what I am beginning to do is I'm beginning to collect a small three or four um, a deck collection of meta lists where I will be studying the meta in the weeks prior to the event and I'll be bringing my best game for my perception of what that meta is going to be. And I think we are finally at a point now, other people have probably been doing this for a while, but at least from my perspective, I think we're finally at a point that where like, cause, cause mid range, uh, I'm not saying that it showed its meta, its metal. That's not what I'm necessarily saying. But I think overall, in the last few months, we have proven that if if people within the community set their minds to to do something, that they can indeed like figure something out and try to meaningfully change the meta. Because I mean, the fact that it was all combo almost all all year last year was a little annoying i know it doesn't bother you <laughs> yeah that's that's personal friends. i do not blame anyone who does not want to play during combo winter um, but, but yeah yeah but yeah the 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 conscious decision for a number of people to like intentionally work on uh it was originally supposed to be mid-range but then it kind of enveloped uh control as well uh, and to to show some positive you know feedback on their efforts as ascribed in the in the data i don't know i uh i have high hopes for us getting into this more 
uh, rock, paper, scissors type scenario, you know, uh, within because the tournaments are happening. Like Bobby just announced at the time of this recording, Bobby just announced his uh, next tournament, uh, which I believe he is going to uh, have a tighter iteration for uh, his tournaments. And they're probably going to like, I think Chris and Common Cause, one more game, uh, his Common Cause is going to be like, you know, have a tighter iteration as well. So you're going to have a bunch of online tournaments available this year in 2024 uh, based off of those numbers. Then when you start adding in all of the, the richest rags and the, the one-offs and all that stuff. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, the, all of that was to get to a point to say that I, I, I think we're ready as a format, <clears throat> as a meta uh, for this rock, paper, scissors type of effect. And I'm all about it. So yeah for sure of course that's not going to stop people from playing gretchen oh well yeah you know it's <laughs> good in any meta if you think about it <laughs> okay so we're in the open play uh at the top we're uh in open play 82 games were reported now that's a little bit less uh of games uh from previous quarter uh i think i suspect um a lot of that is due to um like dallas is in his last uh year of school i think other people are kind of in a similar circumstances so what i'm getting at is uh uh life circumstances uh have gotten in the way of people playing as much as they did maybe a year ago so um uh, not that i ever expect that to go completely away these types of things ebb and flow uh, I'm still on the hunt for uh, an adequate way to uh, report open play games that's not rooted in Discord. Uh, so uh, there's there's always going to be, especially we learned over the uh, the winter time that there's always going to be this opportunity for people to try to game the system. But I think having experienced it, you know, uh, one or two or th you know a couple of those type of people already we've kind of figured out fail safes to kind of protect the data in that way so uh moving more to you know a web-based reporting i mean it's something that i've always wanted to do i talked about it last year uh it's still on the radar but i digress um, here we go so how about that loyal subordinate yeah i mean <laughs> loyal subordinate uh being up at the top is uh pretty cool to see it is with six games played, so, you know, relatively low game count. Um, not really relatively, relatively high game count, actually, I suppose, mm -hmm. on average. Um, but yeah, looking through these, you can see, as per usual, a uh, smaller format. We don't have that many games to work with outside of decks, like specifically Gretchen with 22 games and Sir Conrad with 14. Mm -hmm. Um but some pretty interesting numbers, um, some pretty fun decks that you don't see much of uh, popping up, like Phalanx Leader. I believe Lotad was playing that for a bit. Um, and some other cool games and, and uh, some of the decks that you've been seeing everywhere. Uh, once again, TPI, Abdel, Iron Throne, Malcolm Breaches, Gretchen, and uh, some of the decks in the... Uh, Popular commanders that were outside the meta are decks that we've seen do well in tournaments mm -hmm. or at least show up to tournaments uh, recently, like Scholar of the Ages, Dargoketis, and Teshar. And you're still seeing some experimentation like the Blorpity Blorp and uh, Discipline Duelist, Phalanx Leader. Uh, those decks there are people. I, well, I'm going to loop Conrad in there too, because the, uh, the previous version of Conrad, the rats version is not calculated in these numbers because this, this represents, uh, all of the experimentation that myself, uh, Aaron, um, and there's like two other people, uh, who I can't recall off the, the top of my head right now who were playing Conrad in the last couple of months, especially leading up to, uh, uh, common cause and sanctuary. So, uh, yeah, looking at experimentation is still live and alive and well in the open play arena. Now, what'll be interesting as we transition, uh, we're going to cover archetypal type percentages uh, next. But as we get into the uh, 
uh, the organized play, you're going to see some of this experimentation fall off, you know? So, but people are still... As it does. Yeah, yeah. as it does. <laughs> okay, so archetype popularity versus archetype performance. So the big thing of note it would be, I guess, aggro being like underperforming. Yeah, significantly underperforming from aggro. Everything else doing tolerable, which um, is really interesting mm -hmm. to me how that one works out. But uh, now the mid range, the mid range number of plus three point seven percent. Uh, I will ad readily admit that that's probably due to an overrepresentation, because uh, myself and other people, we were doing, <laughs> we were doing podcasts, we were you know talking on st streams, we were you know mid range this, mid range that, blah blah blah. And when you when you talk about a thing twenty four seven for a few months, and you're trying to whip up the base as it were and hype everybody up, you're you're naturally going to get some overperformance. Uh, you know, you know, ex well, over representation, which leads to an opportunity for over performance. There you go. There you go. We got it. So whether or not the, that came at the cost of people experimenting with, uh, aggro, well, I mean, it answers that a little bit in, uh, I don't know what the preceding quarters numbers were for aggro. And if that was closer to you know, 30%. And if the, the share of that was split between an uptick and potential control, because I remember control numbers being historically low, like single digits. Yeah, yeah. They were really low last quarter. So yeah, it's, I don't keep, I don't keep all this stuff in front of me, which I, I don't know. I'm bad. You're bad too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just looking at these numbers, uh, we find it interesting that uh, aggro has the performance uh, deficit that it does, and that uh, mid-range being, you know, that just might be a representation issue. Not to say that partially it's not legit, but, you know, caveat with XYZ. Uh, and then in the open play, uh, the nice thing about uh, tracking turns in open play is you get to know approximately the speed of the format of the meta uh these are all nice to know because um it tells you approximately when you need your interaction so um anything on these two before we skip um, over to organized i think the biggest thing to note is obviously like if you're going in depth knowing the exact turn was averaged and the median turn length is worth noting but i think for our purposes just noting that it the order of speed was combo aggro mid-range control in a open play is something worth noting to compare to uh overall and tournament play wow so uh if you get if you dig into the weeds and how uh combo is supposed to be you know pushing the envelope competing with uh, uber fast combo and they're racing, you know, if this was a, a drag strip, then, uh, aggro is just a, a, a skosh behind, uh, a me, yeah. a wee, a wee hair wits, uh, behind. Which is typically, uh, correlating with my experience for the format. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. so yeah, I think that tracks pretty well. Dallas says all's no normal. <laughs> Do the organized play. So I'm going to skip over the uh, the color stuff. Um, I'm not saying it's not important because newer players to the format who uh, tend to, or to the meta rather, that tend to latch on to like, my favorite archetype is this and my favorite colors are this. Uh, it's still relatively important for their learning, you know, journey to go through and, you know, figure out like if they're playing uh, Golgari, or five color, you know, maybe, maybe they want to do some research and switch over to uh Simic, right? Right, Dallas? Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> good. Okay. Uh, so table seven, organized play. Um, this one, 56 games. Now these are different than the 80 something games from the match, uh, op uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, submitted games. Uh, these were actually held in organized tournament settings. 
So more more regimented, more regulated, strict times, you know, judging, REL, yada, yada, yada. Um, now, 56, 56 tournament games in one quarter. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're on the uprise with the organized play, that's for sure. So uh, in that list, like looking through now, once again, uh, we see what was the Malcolm, uh, the, uh, the, the Malcolm Rog. So the Malcolm Rog is basically replaced with the Kedis. So the uber fast Malcolm list isn't showing up to the tournament tables, uh, largely because that's that deck's being piloted by, uh, one person down under, <laughs> but I mean, some, well, actually that's not necessarily true. There was a small tournament in Germany. Uh, who a person showed up with uh, a Malcolm Rog list. So there's one represented uh, in these numbers. It's just not, it didn't perform. So it's right. not showing up. But to that end, that would give us three versions of, uh, of Malcolm Red that showed up in this quarter's data, which is probably a significant thing. Uh, um, Malcolm Togo showed up to uh, the Sanctuary too. So. All the Malcolms. Uh, four out of oh, five. Yeah, Chris, right? one more game. Yeah. Yeah. No, no Malcolm Helena yet. Or Elena, whichever one is. Or red. or Malcolm Dargo. But, uh, I know. I know. Ah, uh, that too. That too. Alas. <laughs> so uh Tatiova is back on back on the menu. Um 33% win rate, which is uh kind of par for what we would expect a uh, air quotes uh, meta uh, tournament meta commander to to uh, their performance. Um, the Rasad is an interesting you know inclusion here and in inclusion here. Uh, of course, Mystic Enforcer is an interesting uh, uh, include here as well. Um, not that I say include like it was like a voluntary thing. Uh, these numbers. <clears throat> These stats were generated off of performance numbers, so Mystic Enforcer is on this list because it won X number of games. So, yep. So a lot of these in like the six to eight um, games reported are piloted by like maybe one person. Like I'm pretty sure Mystic Enforcer is one person who played three rounds at two tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. Um, whereas some of these down here, like if we look at outside the meta, uh, Gretchen and Conrad, 18 and 13 games, respectively, um, and TPI at 13 games as well in the mm -hmm. meta, Dada, and those Ezra. are more likely to be uh, two people yeah. or more. So Zada was, uh, Zada was the same person in two tournaments. Uh, mm -hmm. Azra was two people in two tournaments. Uh, Conrad was two people in uh two so four so four no so myself and aaron in two separate tournaments so that's that yeah. that's those numbers uh gretchen i don't know but none of them were me this time it wasn't me <laughs> i didn't um, do it. i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean uh as you said before uh in organized play with the exception of like rasad and mystic enforcer uh, the rest of these are your typical uh, decks that you would see. And uh, contrary, I, I can't speak to the Rasad Feywild uh, deck, but uh, Mystic Enforcer is a list that I know of uh, that this guy's been playing it for a while. So it's not like a, this experimental list that they cobble together. Now, there was probably some fine tuning in the last like month or two, but you know, you got you got an experienced pilot on the list doing what experienced pilots do with a ham sandwich and, you know, doing it, doing a thing. So um, less, less experimentation, you know, in in this. So that's a that's an interesting thing that we can pivot to real quick is. When you have those experimental lists that you're developing, at what point? What's the catalyst that gets you to convert to go, okay, I'm taking this to uh, a tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think part of that is just like 
belief in your deck, right? Like, I played Teshar for a while, and I wouldn't ever bring it to an event that I was, like, seriously trying to win. The deck's just not that good. I brought it to an event because I just wanted to have fun with it and not play Gretchen for once. Um, but yeah, like, after playing Gretchen for as long as I did, it's almost impossible for me to seriously consider bringing anything other than Malcolm Red or Gretchen. But that's just because I feel that the power level on those two decks is so far above everything else for me mm. that it's just not worth bringing because that's what I'm comfortable with. I've been playing both those decks for almost two years. Yeah. Um, that's just what I know. So you're not you're not saying exactly the same thing that I I purport to say next. So I don't believe that Conrad or my version of TPI uh, are just that good. I think that my level of comfort with those lists, because they, they pair on nicely to my play style. And so I, I really get hyped when I play those two lists and I find joy when I'm actually working through the machinations of what they do. Uh, and I think because of that, um, I'm probably better with them than most other people would be. So based on that contextually, like I would, I would consider bringing those lists. Um, uh, like I said earlier, uh, in the recording, I'm, I'm trying to work on like another third list. I don't know what that is yet. So that way I have this, you know, this, these three core lists that, uh, not necessarily do the same thing, which would be nice. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, too. I'm like, I've got my combo deck. I've got my control deck. and I'm trying to find an aggro deck that I think is actually worth playing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing a decent amount of Dark Oketis online, just like randomly. Sober? Uh, eh, usually not. <laughs> but um, usually that's what it takes to convince me to play aggro. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've tried a few, but none of them have quite quite hit that niche of a power Set, level settle down kids this was a joke yeah <laughs> if you know if you know dallas then there's a history there <laughs> yeah there, there is. um but yeah um it's just finding what hmm. works for you what you feel comfortable with and what you think you can actually get the job done with, i think yeah uh, i can't uh i can't disagree with that uh at all uh some people I'm not saying that some people are us, but some people are so good that, you know, they can literally bring a pile of cards and perform well, maybe not win, but perform well. So, uh, that's kind of what I aspire to be is, you know, it's just, I don't have the time to dedicate to play. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so outside of the meta, it, it's interesting that the popular commanders include, uh, like Gretchen, uh, and then all these other non-usual suspects. So you have this like really popular commander, uh, and then you have all of these upstarts as it were like paired in there with it. I found that to be, uh, uh, interesting. Um, Oh, and no Abdel at all on this list. Um, is worth noting. You're, I would say. you're right. Oh my God. You are totally right. Especially. Because I know there was uh, uh, Abdel Blue, Abdel Black, and Abdel Red in these tournament results. So, yep. wow. I mean, I know like Gator wasn't playing Abdel at any event. Mm -hmm. So there's like one major association with it. Um, he's some of these Azra Odds Maker games. Um, yeah, Abdel Blue uh, has a. Uh, I'm probably misquoting this, but uh, has a 44% win rate on the site. Uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's mm. in our overall data to mm. uh, Abdel Sailor. So we'll see him later, but um, not showing up on just yeah. pure organized well, this would be numbers. This would be outside of the quarter. So like uh, now one person has the vast majority of those wins logged with uh Abdel Blue um so there's we we can we can talk about that later so <clears throat> for the organized meta or organized gameplay 
uh, archetypes. So you'll notice that here the performance metrics are different. So aggro actually has somewhat of a, a stake in comparatively like it wasn't it wasn't being it either wasn't being played and didn't have the ratio of uh uh popularity versus performance you know you know have that ratio in open play but you see it actually kind of come through on uh the organized play side that's that's pretty interesting any thoughts about that yeah i mean is aggro dead really um <laughs> I think part of that is um, due to the somewhat shift in what's being played mm -hmm. um, to some extent, but what's well, also think, probably notable to say not to cut you off there, uh, but it's probably it. notable to say that uh, uh, the more Voltron lists like Mystic Enforcer and uh, um, um, what's the bear Wilson, uh, yeah. th those more Voltron lists that are reported as Voltron in the, in the, in the data, uh, are probably converted to aggro uh, for the yeah, stats. I checked for tournament play, and every deck that was listed as Voltron was converted to aggro for stats. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Mystic Enforcer, Dargo Kedis, um, Rasad is probably an aggro list on there. Mm -hmm. uh, things of that note. So, there's also some interesting uh, debate to be had with, especially in my opinion, the classification of what's a mid range deck. Um, I think we still very much need to sort that out in our format. But um, so this is a good time. This is a very good time. So uh, Bobby was recently on uh, a Friday night episode with PDH Pod, and they they were talking. They spent an hour and something talking this very thing about how difficult it is to define mid range. And I think for the moment, I'm settled on the following. Uh, and the problem is, is it doesn't talk about mid range in in isolation. It talks mi mid range in uh, comparison to other things. Now, I agree with them on that podcast that uh, combo is one of those seemingly uh, you you can slot combo. You can have a control combo list. You can have a you know a fast combo list, which is really like a you know could be aggressive but you know it's combo you know They're like aggressively tutoring aggressively you know like combo can slot in pretty much anywhere along the spectrum uh but when it comes to like aggro and mid-range and control list uh i i like it i like to look at it in this way uh aggro lists your threats are as fast as your interaction in mid-range list your 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 interaction is slightly faster than your threats so puts you in an opportunity to really need to control those first uh, couple of turns to make sure that you have tempo on your side so that way when you leverage your threats which aren't necessarily going to be one ones and two twos and you know four ones you know what have you they're probably going to be something more substantial four four five five yada 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 so for mid range, your interaction is slightly faster than your threats. Now control is the is the ultimate end of that spectrum where your your interaction is always outpacing your threats. In fact, it's your interaction that's setting up the tempo for you to be able to do your finish, whether that be uh, you know big beefy creature aggro finish or uh, flicker combo or whatever you know you're going to do. For that finish so that's kind of the way that i'm thinking about it it's there's there's a speed component but not like a it's like a temporal type speed type component yeah and i think a lot of the time like it's pretty easy to know if you're trying to be aggro it's pretty easy to know if you're trying to be control and if you're not using a combo and you're not sure mm -hmm. if you're really control or really aggro i think a lot of people just say yeah, it's it's mid range. Instead of really stopping to think, is it like is it really a control deck? I think a lot of the a lot of mid range decks in our format are actually control decks, and uh, people uh, misconstrue it because they're like, well, I'm not winning till turn ten. 
it's like yeah but that's like kind of when the game it'll should be, be ended, it'll right? be funny like, like next next year this time we'll uh look back at this conversation and other this era and be like ah they were stupid you know <laughs> it, it, yeah the, the, you know. The things per- we're getting progressively better, and I think we're showing that all the time. So, like, I'm not necessarily, I'm not personally worried about uh, the direction that we're heading because we're always tightening it up uh, as as we go along. Uh, to kind of close this out, uh, um, Bobby had made one good point about uh, uh, really archetypes don't matter uh, because it's just a matter of you know what your deck does and how you do it. Now, I agree with that halfway. When you get into a pod, and that information, that pod composition becomes known, then you can just fall into, like, this is how everybody's decks operate. But the problem is, outside of that, when you're trying to, and Bobby made a good point of uh, bringing this up as well, uh, when you're trying to educate converts to the format, who are coming from these external um, uh, formats, these other formats, you have to describe to them what it is, this card, this pile of cards you're giving them, what it, what it does. So we need necessarily those terms to be able to describe adequately uh, what this person is supposed to be doing with these cards. Like you said, uh, you pretty, you pretty much know when you're playing aggro. So yeah, that's a conversation I've had with Bobby a lot, and usually that's about where it ends up. We're like, yeah, they don't matter, but that's only true for like experienced players, right? Enfranchised. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can be, yeah, you get it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the nomenclature is necessary, broadly speaking. I, I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, we're next on colors, of course, like before, uh, we're not going to concern ourselves with the color stuff. Uh, do you want to point out, is it just specifically, is it insane numbers? Um, but yeah, anyways. So yeah. So 16% popularity, 11%, 11.8% performance. Yeah. That's like a 26% win rate. (laughs) (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) Um, <laughs> but okay. So overall, 138 games reported, uh, 67 unique commanders. Uh, here is a breakdown of uh, meta. Now, once again, these uh, these these meta considerations. Uh, as I recall, he's using some sort of like uh, standard deviation break, you know, to illustrate performance you know so if these are performing uh which is uh uniquely different than previous observations on the format uh by other people i think we i think we revolutionized this this (laughs) this way of viewing performance anyway uh loyal subordinate you know having that 66.7 percent with six games um, is that comparable to the 40 games and 32.5% win rate of Gretchen uh, Twitch Willow? You say? I say no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, I think obviously having more games makes the numbers more valid. Mm-hmm. Um, valid? No. Uh, who knows how many games we need for it to be mm-hmm. valid data. But um, obviously increasing the number of games will give you a more accurate baseline for and this is an opportunity this is also an opportunity too to talk about uh open play submissions like for all its faults the reason why we keep on uh um reporting the open play stuff because i mean that's the thing uh we talked about abdel sailor uh earlier and it's got a high win uh win rate on the website and you know, who knows uh, if games are being reported that aren't winners? Uh, you know, like, like, did, did the, did the games that where Abdel Adrian lost, you know, were those reported? You know, hard, yeah. hard, hard to know. So in some instances, it's really easy to 
uh, well, it's not really easy. There's opportunity that you have to get by the, the structure of moderators who look at this data and all that stuff. There's opportunity to try to sneak some stuff by. Uh, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but, I mean, there's, there's a possibility there of the numbers being slightly skewed by their representation of being reported by the winner of those matches. You know, if they were, if that, if that player was reporting all of their matches, you know, which would be really difficult to do because then you'd get some overlap, you know, if everybody was reporting the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I think the best way to go about it, it's harder to do this for like paper play, mm -hmm. but digital play and do exactly that. The winner reports the game mm -hmm. and then every game gets reported anyways. And it, it's totally fine. And, and part of that too um, is, yeah. uh, Part of that too is uh, um, people people have levied complaints about the uh, the Discord based bot, you know the uh, the form to submit and you know how accessible it is and all of that stuff. And I mean, I'll I'll go ahead and say it. I've studied people for uh, you know almost thirty years now, and people are lazy. You know, they'll do the new convenience is important. Yeah, they'll <laughs> yeah. do they'll do the new hype thing for a while. But if they've got the uh, the top deck on the thing, you know, maybe they don't have to report anymore. Yep. Um, but yeah, the and only the only caveat to that, gonna yeah. Report, but <laughs> yeah, the only caveat to that is that uh, whoever plays Gretchen, those that body of people, they are really diligent about reporting there because they want they want those Gretchen numbers to be represented. You know, so they they I'm all report to that win rate. <laughs> <laughs> Get people to stop being scared of Gretchen. Um. I mean, it is it is the best submit commander. <laughs> I don't I don't think we're the first people to say that. <laughs> Certainly not. Surely, no surely. doubt. So uh, in so okay, so of the the meta commanders, nothing really all that surprising. Uh, seeing Mayhem Devil kind of enter the fray a little bit. Uh, uh, is interesting, but it's no surprise with the uh, uh, the uh, the testing of uh, the venturing into the, uh, the 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 development of mid range. It's not really surprising that you know that's on the list. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, Azra Oddsmaker in the popular category, and of course you know a lot of repeats in here. I think Mayhem Devil was probably oh Mayhem Devil and Danatha and Dalek Squadron are ones that we hadn't previously talked about. Yeah, Danitha showed up on the open play one, but like I think Mayhem Devil didn't show up because mm. it looks like just looking at uh the previous requirements, it must have had exactly three games in open play and four games in organized play mm -hmm. to not show up on either report. Um so you know that's one thing worth noting about uh, the statistics. Some decks just won't show up because they haven't gotten enough games in. Right um, but, yeah. Um, I think those are the only ones that haven't been at least mentioned. Yeah. And uh, poor Teshar sitting down there. Yeah. 10 games reported. 20 win. Okay, so the big, the big numbers, the big get, so combined total organizes, organized plus opened uh, popularity versus performance. So mid range putting up those, those numbers in the, in the performance category for the combined, which I find interesting, especially with combo. I think combo is always in that, uh, uh, low to mid thirties, uh, range as far as, uh, popularity. Yeah. I, seems I, like it. One I, to two per pod. Yeah. I, I don't I don't ever think I've seen it in the 40s and it's been a long time since I've seen it at 27 or 28 or something like that so it's always it's always typically equally represented in those low 30s <laughs> yeah equally yep. represented <laughs> but to see like uh you know controls numbers up and uh, mid-range numbers up and it looks to be uh, at the expense of aggro which is you know fine um, it'd be nice if uh, if uh, these started evening out. What if on the next report those were all twenty fives? I'd be very shocked. Um, to see control jump up that much is 
my well, opinion. You have, I don't you've got, think that many people want to play Control. <laughs> well, you've got uh, you've got Floodgate, you've got uh, Sir Conrad, you've got Crackling Drake. All three of these are viable Control. Uh, Arison or Ernest A- Ernest. Yeah. What's that? Malcolm Breaches. Aaron Malcolm Breaches. Yeah. Uh, I think those are the big ones. I don't think so. That's five. Ones, but. That's five control lists. Viable control lists that have previously put up numbers uh, over the years and prove like proven performers in that archetype. So I don't know. I. Now you made a point of saying like I don't know if people want to play control. You know, you 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 can't be on average. You can't be sitting back. You can't be laying back and playing control in this format. You've got to be pushing forward. So yeah, play- I think it's definitely the most demanding um, of the archetypes, in my opinion. Yeah, and yeah. So you know, eat your Wheaties, build up your mental calories. You know, because you're going to need them. So yeah, especially in those grindy tournaments where you're playing four or five rounds, man, does murder. it take murder? <laughs> so in the uh, the median turns, uh, everything looks relatively similar. Uh, aggro being just a half step behind the half step that it was previously that we pointed out. Um, yeah, I I don't know I. I'm not suggesting that this is the renaissance period. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting at a minimum is that the last four months has proven uh, that there is opportunity in the community focusing on developing something. And, you know, this is wholly representative of their efforts to want to see something being manifested. Now, whether or not you played Azra and got your butt kicked and all that stuff and you're soured on uh, mid-range again, or <clears throat> if you tried to, tried to discover mid-range but actually landed on control but are still dedicated to developing something mid-range and trying to push that, you know, like, there, there's people there's people all over. So, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm hopeful that it uh, that it turns out well. Let's see what we got here. If there's any nuggets down here in the old conclusion. Looks like there's just a a rehashing of the, uh, uh, of course, compared to last year, many of the same meta commanders. Hmm, Surprise. No, if you're, if you're good, if you're good, you're good. I think at this point we recognize that if you're, if you're good, you're good. The, the chaff, like what's a good, uh, What's a good commander that people were playing around with last year that just uh like fell off? Hmm. Um, um is Viscopa on here at all? It's in uh oh it's down there under uh Oh we haven't we, seen, we haven't so seen much. much of, there we go. I'm yeah. spot on. <laughs> yeah, so Dargo Dargo Malcolm is my fault. Apparently I'm the only one that can pilot that that stupid thing. <laughs> oh, Cormella, um Gut leader's a little bit of an unfair one because the 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 one guy who plays that the most was playing uh, Conrad. Yeah, so. I mean that's kind of the case for a lot of these decks, right? Like uh, Anklesaur for Aranus, um, things of that nature. Obviously, you with Dargo Malcolm. Uh, once again, small format. We only have so many pilots, and mm. uh, whenever one pilot switches decks, it certainly has an Tanks effect. Tanks the numbers, yeah. Fair. A tournament player um, for organized play really has mm-hmm. an effect. Okay, I'm going to switch this back over to the uh, the two people. Okay, so Bardarn has some con- concluding thoughts uh, down there. Of course, there's probably uh, 30% of the information he had listed on that report that we didn't uh, cover. Um, I highly encourage you folks to go out there and read it um, because, I mean... He's looking at what the data is telling him, and as uh, as you heard it here, uh, I you know it's adequately expressing what what Dallas and I are actually seeing out on the uh, uh, on the battlefield. So yeah, go read the stuff. There's a uh, there's a good insight there. Um, so we've got Philly next, and then we've got. 
Sanctuary or Common Cause 3? I think... Uh, yeah, I think Common Cause is in April this month, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next Sanctuary is a bit later. Yep. So here in this next month, we're going to have three tournaments again. And then by the time this next quarter f rolls up, uh, we'll probably have... Don't know if RIW, a lot of us have been reaching out to them to, you know, find out what the deal is with that. Haven't heard anything. Uh, we've heard that they're going to do it. We just don't know what that looks like, you know. So by the time this next quarter rolls around, uh, we'll probably have, if RIW fires, uh, four or five tournaments, at least five, in this uh, this next quarter. So... Yeah, Here's big, big stuff. <laughs> big numbers. Yeah. So, like, we're, you know, what are you hoping to see? Like, I already mentioned that I'm hoping to see whether or not we go back to a combo meta again. That's that's not what I'm concerning myself with necessarily, uh, because I'm not going to be pushing. I don't have an agenda, and I'm not out there working the rails and all that stuff, getting people to think about mid-range and all that stuff. So whatever, whatever, wherever people naturally aggregate in their thoughts about what metas they're, or what, what uh, archetypes they're playing, we're just going to see that natural, you know, selection kind of happen over the next, at, at least I'm not going to be pushing the stuff. I can't speak for other people. So what do you, uh, what do you see happening in this next, uh, this next quarter developing? Do you think this is going to be like just, more of the same from the old guard? Um, to some extent, I would expect, obviously, Gretchen's probably going to show up at least one to every tournament, um, which is a big notion in our small format. I think it's uh, definitely worth something to say that a deck will show up to every tournament. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's been a Gretchenless tournament yet, um, and I don't see that stopping in the future mm -hmm. um tpi i expect to be up there um but i would also like to see just like people bringing the list that they've like really been honing in on mm -hmm. um like the decks like uh, mystic enforcer and things of that nature like the decks that people are really trying to find a niche in uh kadira was one that i think is pretty cool and has some potential mm -hmm. Um, I worked on that deck like a year ago, maybe, and it was cool, but it, it's just not my style, so I mm. dropped it, um, and I've really enjoyed seeing other people pick that deck back up and uh, figure out things that I wasn't able to figure out. So. Mm. And of course, this, uh, this recording is before Modern Horizons super ooper commander specific yeah. modern changing who knows who knows? Oh. who knows exactly how the format is going to pan out uh over the coming months um i don't know i i don't think because tpi is a really specific type of list and uh i'm the big combo proponent of that 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 commander ryan is the big mid-range proponent of that you had one person with a, uh, I wouldn't say combo. It was more of a deterministic line with the, uh, the, uh, uh, Ashnod's altar, you know, just to generate big mana and fireball, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's more deterministic combo than, uh, like infinite combo. Um, not deterministic. Not, not, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, I also like the combo build for TPI personally, but yeah, I think that commander is actually versatile enough that a lot of people can bend it in a way that they want to play it. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're a big combo hater and you still want to play is it. Um, as we've seen, it can work without combo. It or can Crackling Drake. Combo. Um, yeah, Crackling <laughs> Drake. Um, there's options. But, and yeah, I'm sure Malcolm will show up to every event. Uh, you can quote me on that. I'm going to guess there's probably at least yeah. one Malcolm something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yeah, I mean, there's there's certain, like, uh, Gretchen's selling point is that uh, in the late game, you, well, 
in the journey to get to the late game, you've generated so much advantage over turn, over turn, over turn via Gretchen that 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 long game, you know, is is that, you know, people like that kind of stuff. Malcolm is kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum where you expect to, like, start gaining that advantage really quickly. And it's actually mm -hmm. it's probably worse late late game, later game. So, yeah, unless you're specifically breaches variant. Um, and even then, comparably to Gretchen, your late game's not as good. Um, it's more focused on the interaction rather than accumulation of mm -hmm. abundant resources and then just going, you can't stop me. I have 30 mana and 7 mm -hmm. counter spells. Um, much <laughs> different kind of game ending late game. Yeah, didn't you see me play draw it. a card and play a land? I did that. Yeah, I did that fifteen times. <laughs> like, didn't you see me do it? Uh, yeah, Conrad. On the other hand, uh, I discovered that uh, um, Con when when everybody's focused on mid range and bear decks, Conrad is worse. So when. So I'll be looking at Conrad again once we see this undulation of like the mid range falling off and people leveraging back into that faster combo stuff because it really likes to prey on those early, uh, those early combo decks. Yeah, I think it's in the same vein as like Viscopa there, where like having the activated ability to just like threaten to win the game but not be forced to go for it. Um, it's like Gretchen. I think they're kind of in the same vein, except you know. Conrad and his Conrad is like non combo. Gretchen is combo, and Viscopa is like that gray area in between. Mm -hmm. um, where it's like all of them can kind of win the game by just threatening to be able to do something and then doing something else mm -hmm. the entire game, um, which I think is a really interesting uh, play space for the command zone in our format, particularly. Mm -hmm. Now, what makes what puts Conrad in that position is that, uh, uh, I call it that scam package, uh, where it's basically just every flesh bag, except for that really horrible one, the two mana one that makes you sack your own creature twice. Um, yeah, abyssal gatekeeper, <clears throat> whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Playing all of those effects with some recursion and, uh, some grave flickering and stuff like that. I think that's a really versatile package, uh, that, does, isn't necessarily relegated to just Conrad. Conrad is one of those that uh, can better leverage that because of the interaction in and out of the graveyard. But you know, finding a finding a home for that package in a two color commander that could get some value either off the transactions or uh, you know something to that effect. Get getting value. I haven't haven't looked into it. I haven't figured it out. But you know, someone needs to bring back borrowing. <clears throat> that's all i gotta say that deck's awesome i love that deck um, so so that that package there if uh if people picked i i developed that specifically for those fast combo decks so if we really want to curb i'm talking to you out there if we really want to curb that now it doesn't help with gretchen <laughs> so if you yeah like uh see i don't know mid-range tpi is always going to be ryan in that particular build because he is such a uh such a a passive player you know he, there's no there's no throttle i mean at the very end he tries to put something together like you know for yeah, you it's out. pretty natural development yeah and then i don't know i think that uh I don't know. I'm in, I'm anxious to see more breaches. I think people are gravitating towards that a little bit more. Breaches felt so good. Uh, I think that deck is very very mm -hmm. strong. So, yeah. I I got nothing else. I think uh, I think the state of the format is good. <laughs> There's <laughs> our ramblings at the end just yeah. talking about anything and everything but uh well i mean i think yeah. uh it, what i find interesting uh when i watch other people's content and they get to the end part and they're all like shooting the shit about like x y and z uh if you're really concerned about uh not concerned if you're interested in the specific deck that they were working on and known like if people were really uh looking for my thoughts on 
uh, Conrad, especially like a month later, uh, when you really, you know, capture your your thoughts on something, uh, then that's what it is. I think that I think that package is transferable and can be migrated into other Black X lists, uh, and doing so will potentially wreck aggro development. You know, as a side effect of uh, wrecking fast combo development. So, yeah, for sure. So that's that's how we're talking the battle plan for next. Uh, you know, control control uh, spring. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll rotate through them all at some point. <laughs> right on. All right. Anything else? I think I'm good. All right, sweet. Go catch this bastard over at Common Theory and also Puzzle Box DC over his YouTube. Um, I would say catch me elsewhere, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm right here. <laughs> I mean, you'll see me on other people's spots and stuff because I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta do the thing. So, all right, getting out of here. Thanks everybody for showing up. We'll see you on the flip. Peace.